In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to design shear walls. My name is Tyler Lay, and I make these videos for you, my concrete maniacs. I'm gonna be teaching you to design walls that look something like this. They have moment, they have axial load on them, and they have uniform amount of steel. Steel, 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 steel all throughout the member. And this is the one that actually I feel the most confident with and the one that I, I would recommend you use. Now you can do things like this where you cluster steel at the edges. And some people might say, that's, isn't that more efficient? I mean, doesn't that make more sense? Isn't that what we do in beams? So why shouldn't we do that in walls? And kind of as I was saying before, if something happened to either one of these parts of, of the structure, it would be in big danger. And a wall is a pretty major part of a structure. But something like this, you distribute it your steel throughout, you're gonna have much less of a chance of this high, this extreme event kind of taking out your, your, your actual wall. And ACI is still talking about which one um, is better. We're gonna be talking about shear walls today and shear walls are just like large columns, really big columns. And just like columns, we use things called interaction diagrams to help us figure out the combination of axial load and moment that this structure can take. We're gonna use a simplified approach by Cardenius and Magura, and I've got the title here and the ACI special publication that you can track it down yourself. It's an oldie, but a goodie. What it does is it says, I'm gonna have a very long wall. There's gonna part that's gonna be in compression. There's a part that's gonna be in tension. And I'm gonna have steel that's uniformly distributed throughout the wall. That's what this technique uses uniform distribution of steel throughout the wall. This is gonna be L sub W, the length of the wall. That will be H, the height of the wall, or the B that you would usually use in a normal beam or a column. Now, just like a column, we're gonna assume the strain here at the top is 0 0.003, this is C, this would be LW minus C, and this is what the stress looks like in the concrete, some kind of Whitney stress block type compression up here. This is what the stress looks like in the steel. It's going to be yielded at the top in compression, yielded at the bottom in tension, and there will be some strain hardening, but we're going to ignore that. We're going to act like that doesn't happen, and things are pretty much at yield. Now, in this concept, we're going to derive a part of the interaction diagram. If you haven't seen interaction diagrams before, you should check out my other videos on them. This is the axial load over here. This is the moment over here, and we're going to be just drawing this part, just this part. And to do that, we're gonna use this equation, Mn equals half the area of steel times Fy times L sub W um, times one plus this piece of N over ASFY times one minus C over L sub W, this big thing. What is all this stuff? Well, Mn is the moment capacity, Pn is the axial load that is on, on the structure, As is the total area of steel, LW is the length of the wall, and C is the distance from the compression fiber to the neutral axis. But wait, there's more. There's this term C over L sub W, which is equal to all of this business. This alpha, alpha right here, is Pn over AGF prime C. W here is rho sub V, Fy over F prime C. Rho sub V is the area of steel vertical, right? Vertical coming up at you, divided by the area gross of the plan, and beta one is A over C, or alpha over C, and everything goes into this big thing here. But what we're going to do is first, of course, use a Jedi move. <laughs> or a ninja move, and we're gonna simplify this. We're gonna take this big long equation and we're gonna assume all of this goes to 0.9. This is very similar to a trick that I used to design beams, um, but it is a key first step and it can very quickly help you figure out how much area of steel that you need. And of course, you have to go back and check this assumption. So since we're in that weird portion of the interaction diagram, that's the part where the fee is gonna vary from 0.9 to 0.65, um, we're going to use this linear interpolation relation to figure out where that actually is. Um, where the axial stress, the value right here is PU over F prime C area gross. That thing goes there. We've already talked about how to figure out the axial load. Now let's figure out how to find the transverse steel or the 
increase the shear strength of, of a wall. And this is very similar to beams. We're going to use this um, shear capacity as V sub C plus V sub S, but there's going to be a difference when it comes to V sub C. Now, usually in the past, we would use 2 times the square root of F prime C BWD, and we're still going to use that. That's still going to be a limiting value, but we're also going to use these equations as well. These are alternate equations that you could use. This is equation for shear if you have some kind of axial load on the member. I think these things are pretty straightforward about what they are. Now this one is a little bit more complicated and, and again, this is when you have moment on the member as well, but you plug into all of this equation to figure out what your shear capacity is. You're going to then figure out how much V sub S you need. And this is gonna be AV, this is the area of your horizontal steel. Yeah, you know, horizontal steel, stuff that goes this way. And your D is in this equation is going to be 0.8 times L sub W. Anytime you need D in anything here, D, 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 you would assume it's 80% 0.8 of L sub W and S is going to be your horizontal reinforcement spacing. Again, the spacing of your bar, center to center. Now there's only one more thing, well, two more things you have to make sure that you get right. There is an AS minimum that you need for your longitudinal steel, and you will plug into one of these to see which one actually controls, and it figures out another thing you have to check for your area of steel, or an H versus L sub W. And then there's also your a AV minimum, or the amount of transverse steel minimum, and you will plug into this AV over S times H, H, which is again greater than 0 0.0025, or it could be one of these spacings, L sub W over 3, 3H, three or 18 inches. So let's work an example problem in the next video, and hopefully it'll, everything will become crystal clear. I hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and of course, leave me comments below. I love hearing from you and getting your comments. Take care, everybody. Bye.